Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Bear Beer Reviews and this is probably going to be dubbed the ultimate American IPA standoff. Uh, these are just a selection of bottles that I've picked up uh, whilst being here in America and you can probably see that some of the, the heavy hitters in the in the American IPA scene really. Um, so we're going to do like a side by side comparison as best as possible. I'm here with a couple of friends of mine um, who will be sharing these bottles with but they don't particularly want to be on camera so it's just going to be myself doing them. Um, starting off we're going to be going with like the Stone Go-To IPA which is a new sessionable 4.5 percent but still extremely hoppy IPA from the company who obviously do some amazing beers they enjoy by um, IPA being one of my favorites um, we've got Bell's Two Hearted Ale which I believe is a single hopped ale um, I'll have a read the description and say what, what it is but again it's got a good reputation that's a 7 percent IPA Bell's Point Sculpin again another great reputation from the San Diego area and it's another 7 percenter Resin from New York by 6 point this is a 9.1 percent double IPA um, and then we've got Maharaja by Avery next door to it, which is a 10.2% double IPA. And then the final one is a, a local boy. This is a Captain Lawrence from New York, and this is Seeking Alpha, a triple IPA at 11 point. I think it's 11, 11 dead. Um, so there's some pretty pretty heavy heavy hitting hops. So if I just hand the camera on over, so we should start off by going with the easy boy. We'll go with the Stones Go to my IPA. I've got a glass for this. I'll crack out open. Oh, it's this a new American kind of style, the Session IPA at 4.5. Obviously in England we have beers that kind of find their way into that uh, a lot more often than us. Um, but the idea is to have the same amount of hop hit. I'm going to pour a little bit because I'm going to share this out. Uh, same amount of hop hit but in a really small, um, in a lower percentage. Um, and this one is kind of strawy. It's really, really light for um, stone IPAs. They tend to find are always more copper and apricot colour. This one's a lot more straw in colour. Um, there is a There was a little bit of head in it. It might lace, but it dissipates quite quickly. It's nice and chills. So there's a bit of chill haze on it, but it is it's quite clear when it's not chill hazed, really. So let's go in there and get a nose on it. Oh, holy moly! Wow, it's super intense pine and grapefruit. I really mean it. That's a, it's a real hot hit on the nose, that. God, it's kind of herbal and dank and weedy, too. 4.5%, but that's got a killer aroma. It's a similar sort of aroma to Ruination and, and the Enjoy By, the same punchy attack but in a much smaller percentage of it's that onion -y. it's got that kind of oniony, uh, garlicky note to it, which if you like, you'll like, um, super dank really, so cheers everyone, let's give it a try, god it smells good. Oh, now that is interesting. It, it's it's really remarkably dry actually. Pretty light and I won't say watery, but it's very light bodied with a good level of carbonation, but it's a little bit on the light side for me. And the predominant flavour is that oniony garlicky hoppy note. I like that. I quite like that vegetal herbal hop flavour, but I think some people who prefer citrus and pine more uh, perhaps wouldn't like it. But still, it's a very, very, very intense hop hit um, coming off this small, relatively small, I know in terms of American IPA, small, um, small uh, ABV. Um, but yeah, I can see why this would, um, it, it's different. It is definitely different, and I quite like it. it. It does what it does very well, and it is unbelievably hoppy. But it is very, very vegetable-y but not in a skunky way, in a, in a very herbal and oniony, garlicky, hoppy way. Um, but I quite like that. So um, in terms of rating, I'd probably give this, probably give it an 8 out of 10. It's meant for a sessioning, it's meant to be able to be easily drunk, and it, it will drink quite well, it's got a very light body, it's not much noise sweetness, it's very dry though, and there's a massive heavy hit of hops in it. It's very crisp, and very light, and very drinkable. It does what it says on the tin, but that oniony, garlicky stuff probably, um, Probably won't like some. I know some people are sat near me will will not be liking this one. I'll tell you that much. Mm. So we'll look more at the glass. I'll tell you about the next one. We've got um, Bell's Two Hearted Ale, which is a seven percent IPA. Um, suited to adventure trips, the Upper Peninsula, American Malt, and enormous hop additions, given to be a crisp finish and incredibly floral aroma. 
I, like I said, I believe it's single hops, but I, off the top of my head, I can tell you. I'll show up a little annotation or something on this, so I don't know. So I'll crack this one open now. Oh, yeah. Ooh, lots of smoke off the top. And pouring out as well. Lots and lots of smoke. So I'm only going to do a small amount because I really want to share these around. Um, Again, okay, a little bit chill haze, but you can see this is a lot more copper in colour. Clocking at 7%, they've probably got a bit more malt in. Obviously, there's a little more malt in it, but perhaps a bit of cara or crystal to give it a little bit extra colour, a little bit of extra something, something to it. No real head on it, but again, um, I haven't poured enough to really get a head going, but there's a nice level of carbonation, lots of stuff going around in there. So, on the nose. Mm, now, this one's a lot more citral. It doesn't pong a huge amount, actually. Let's see if I can... I would call this one a lot more floral. It smells quite a lot like elderflowers or... something of the sort. With a little bit of piney. It smells more foresty, really. Nice panel and floral aromas. Uh, completely different from the go-to IP, which was that onion and vegetable-y sort of note. It sounds terrible when you say onion and vegetable, but if you get it, you'll know what I mean, but you'll know it, it doesn't taste as bad as I'm describing it. This was a little more floral. So, and I've got a cold if you can't tell, so it's <laughs> to get through the cold, it must have some aroma. So, cheers everyone, let's give our bells two hearts a try. Hmm. Obviously, 7%, there's a lot more body going on, it's a lot more chunky. Still a good level of carbonation as well. Um, there's a lot more caramel in this. It's, it's a lot sweeter. Although it does get quite dry towards the end, crisps up later on. And um, what you can smell, you can pretty much taste. It's very florally, a lot of elderflower going on, um, and a little bit of pine, and a good level of bitterness. It's quite. Well, it's not astringent. It's just it's got a nice defined level of bitterness. It counteracts that sweetness and gives it a good all-round. Um, feeling in the mouth. It's, it's very nice, it is, it's very pleasant. Um, I, I'd say it's almost more in an English style because it has got the sweetness to it, but I quite like it anyway. Um, rating for this one, perhaps I shouldn't do ratings until we get to the end, um, but I'm going to give this, I think I'll give this an 8.5, it's definitely better than the Stone 2 IPA, uh, Go to IPA in my opinion. Obviously it's a lot stronger, but the flavours seem to uh, blend a little bit better and perhaps more accessible and but it's a more classic combination, but it's done very well. So, clean out the glass and we'll move on to the next one. Um, this is Bass Point's Sculpin IPA, which again, another great reputation to this one. I believe this has a, a lot, um, a very, very wide range of hops in it. Um, and obviously Sculpin, I was point to list the beers after different types of little critters from the sea, so that's your Sculpin on the front, I believe. Um, and this is a, well, flagship beer. There's a habanero version as well, which I would love to put my hands on, but outside of San Diego, California, I, I, I doubt you're going to get it. So again, this one's got more of a copper, amber colour to it. It's crystal clear, this one, and this one did get a little bit of head on it. It does look like it would lace rather well if I poured a full glass, really. So, on the nose for this fellow. Ooh, we're back to vegetables. Um, this one has that garlicky vegetable note in it again but with a citrus undertone running through it. So I can definitely smell sweeter oranges, but like a very herbally hoppy, oniony note across the whole top of that. And this one clocking in at 7%, again, it smells a little bit sweeter than the stone. So, cheers everyone, let's have a try. That's actually quite interesting. Um, it's drier and less caramelly, um, less toffee notes in it, and it's very crisp and uh, quite a bit more bitter than the bells. Um, but I don't get as much of a hot flavour through. There is a little bit of sweetness at the beginning, and then I'm just getting more of a bitterness later on. And again, a little bit of the onion note, quite a lot of grapefruit. Um, but it doesn't have as much of a hot punch as I expected. It's got a really good reputation, this one. But I must say, Bell's um, Two Hearted, the hoppy flavours come through a lot better than, than I think it has done in, in, in the Ballast Point. Um, it's still very it's very drinkable for 7%, and again, it has a good, good amount of body to it. I just don't think it punches as much as I thought it would, actually. I, I'd certainly have one, another one, and it's certainly not a bad beer, but I'd probably knock this one down to something like a 7, 7 out of 10. I would have it again, but I think 
there might be better ones in this range, shall we say. Um, Two Heart in, in particular, you know, I, I would have over this one, and they're both in the same ballpark, 7% IPAs. So, chin chin again. I'm going to wash out my glass. And we'll move on to the resin. So the resin comes in a nice little cap. It's, it's a really small kind of stubby can, you usually see kind of red, red bull or something like that would, would come in these sort of cans. And this one is 9.1%. It says, whatever flames upon the night, man's own resin his heart has fed. Resin is a sticky quint uh, quintessence of hops that quells the encroaching malt sweetness. Now, I've been told by a lot of people here that uh, you shouldn't be drinking six points because they kind of sold out and moved upstate and aren't really um, based in New York anymore. I love the sound of the can. Um, but who, hey ho, um, they've got good beers, and that's clearly why they've been able to expand. So, this one is again a very similar colour to the previous two, perhaps a touch more amber, again a little bit darker in colour. This one does have a lovely amount of head on it, it was pretty much fizzing out the can, and can you see it's going to lace really beautifully? This one looks very nice, and there's tons and tons of fizz in this one by the looks of it. So, on the nose. Oh, we're moving into tropical regions now. We're moving into tropical regions. And it's more pineapple and a bit of papaya and mango, that sort of smell, but alongside um, the kind of pithy, pithy orange and grapefruit as well. Distinctly not as oniony as the previous two, shall I put it, uh, as, as the uh, ballast and the stone. And, and generally has a kind of sweeter, more fruity hop aroma. And also kind of a bit of caramel underneath it. I can see that you probably will have quite a lot of malt profile to it when we try it. So, cheers, let's give it a shot. Wow, well, yeah, yeah, it's, it is quite balanced. We moved from the session to the IPA to the double IPA, and the flavours have amplified with those extra couple of percentage points. So, there is a strong proto barley wine sweetness of co uh, coffee, the caramel and toffee flavours, and uh, then that sweetness dissipates into a really quite strong uh, bitterness across the tongue. And then I'm getting sweet candied orange, um, tropical mango, and passion fruit, and perhaps a bit of lychee in it as well. It's certainly just got this extra two percentage points, which just boosted it up a little bit further. Flavours more intense. Um, the sweeter, more tropical notes coming through, as opposed to the, the kind of more vegetable-y and tartar grapefruit. This is a lot sweeter in, in terms of flavours. And uh, I can see why it's got a bit of a reputation. I wish I could have got a hold of the high res, but it's, it's very rare production, that one. Um, this has great flavours to it. It's very well balanced. There's just enough sweetness and there's just enough hops. And the hops do punch. They do punch and get that bitterness. Nice. It's really is quite bitter afterwards if you leave it in the mouth for a while. But it's a lovely, lovely beer that one. I like that a lot. Um, let's move on up to let's move on up to a nine, a 9 out of 10 with this one. I can see myself, if I, if I had a choice, I would be picking this up very, very easily. I'll tell you that much, I'll tell you that much. So, um, we are moving on now to a couple of strong boys. These ones are above 10%. And everyone's rather impatiently watching and drinking beer for me now, so I can't have to keep it short. So, next up we have the Maharaja by Avery. This is a 10 point, uh, was it 10.2 or 10.1? Um, anyway, percentage beer, 10.2 percentage beer, 102 IBUs, original gravity of 21 Plato, so you know. Nice kind of artwork on it. They do have nice artwork on their beers. They have like a dictator series, I believe, or something of the sort. So they have like a bizarre and imperial style and all that sort of stuff. So if I can, just cut this one open. Hey, help me too much. And pull this filler out as well. Oh, you can see there's a distinct, deeper, darker colour there. It's almost kind of brown going on. Um, and it's, it's cloudy, this one as well, so it must be bottle condition, I suppose, or something of the sort. It's, it's certainly got hot haze to it, so no hot haze, if nothing else. Um, nice level of head again, despite the 10.2%. Um, might lace, and have we got alcohol legs? It's kind of hard to tell. I think we might have alcohol legs going on there as well, so definitely a level of booze in this. Definitely a level of booze. So, let's move on. Let's get a nose. Ooh. Ooh. 
Wow, this one's punchy. This one, like, it really, really jumps out the glass in terms of aroma. Okay, I'm guessing super, super, super sweet oranges in this. Along with a bit of grapefruit as well. And a nice level, a bit of pine, that foresty smell coming through as well. But this one is exploding out the glass. It really has an intense aroma. Uh, even compared to just the the, the resin, um, which is again similar kind of ballpark, but certainly more than the uh, the first three. This one just really leaps up the glass in terms of aroma, and it, it definitely has a caramel and toffee smell to it. Because we are in like, if if you age this, you probably get something akin to a barley wine, um, and you can smell it. You can definitely smell it. And now the head's completely dissipated because there's not much alcohol in it, and there are definitely alcohol legs in it. So cheers. Let's give it a try. Oh yeah, I'm talking like really intense orange, really intense, you could have got like squeezed orange juice into my mouth, tipped in a spoon of brown sugar for good measure, um, you'd have a similar similar kind of flavour, it's it's not very sweet but it definitely has a strong malt backbone coming on, it, it's getting darker in flavour so it's more of a toffee than a caramel, it's getting more brown sugar coming through with this. Very sweet oranges, getting a little bit of pine and floral note across the top of it, and then it bitters up towards the end. It's more pithy, it's more grapefruity, and it has a very strong bitterness. Once that sweetness is gone, the whole mouth is dried out by the bitterness. Uh, but you can probably tell by the way, like, ooh, ooh, ooh. this is oh, this is intense, this is strong, this is a real showcase um, double IPA. It's it's just it really kicks very hard and very well and very good and it's, it's really a delight this one this is um so, I, I, so far this is i don't know if it sounds down because we've gone over percentages but it just it feels like the most complete and thought through package this one so far it just has i should have said well um the resin almost had the balance points seem to miss the two heart with very close to and um, the go to ip seems to miss as well this one just has that extra little push that's going to pop it up and give it uh, let's give it uh, it's one of the best double IPAs I've had for a while, um, so I'm going to give this a nine and a half. I really recommend the Maharaj by uh, Avery if you get your hands on it. This is this is a special beer. This is. Oh. Necking ten point two percent beer, and I really want to nurse that one, but let's move on. So last one is a local boys, Captain Lawrence seeking out a triple. IPA clocking in at 11%. So again, we're in barley wine territory if you left it for long enough. Um, Captain Lawrence have been around for oh, quite extremely. There we go, extremely hefty capsule in the beer, apparently, which look rather awesome as well. Um, I don't know how long they've been around for, but they're um, a bit more local. They haven't got as much of a national um, profile as other brewers from New York. Uh, but what I've had by them, I've thoroughly enjoyed the Risen. Was a Maron, I think I quite enjoyed, which I had at the um, where the wild beers are. And it says, Do you find yourself constantly seeking your next alpha acid overload? Yes. Um, are you just not satisfied with the hoppy bites of your run of the mill IPA? No. Uh, well, look no further. Hop flavour, hop aroma, and hop bites. Brew for hop heads by hop heads. Cheers. From um, the guy who's making sure I can't read on the side of the bottle. Um, so, flaming hops on the front with a tap on it. Let's give it a try. Uh, I want to save this one for last. Obviously because of the percentage, but also because it's a triple IPA, and um, you know, and, and, and triple IPAs in England are very hard to come by. Oh, look at the amount of head on that! Just a small pour. Wow, good lacing too, and, and very, very light in colour actually. So this one's clearly brewed to be slightly less. Oh, it's got less speciality malt and more standard malt in it, so it might not be as sweet. Anyway, uh, triple IPAs you don't come across too often anyway, regardless. But. Um, I thought I'd save it to last and showcase the local New York brewery as well. So a lot lighter in colour, so probably less speciality, might be less malt driven. Um, a good amount of head as well, 11% and we're not getting any, we're not getting a huge amount of alcohol legs with this and it's going to leave a nice trace down the glass as well. So, on the nose. <sighs> on the nose there is a lot of booze. Which I must admit is masking some of the flavour, but I can just perceive underneath it that there's a very sweet citral American hot flavour. 
and it's again it's it, it's sweeter it's sweeter than I was anticipating considering the colour but I'm getting tropical fruits again the sweeter juicier tropical juicy fruits you know like the mangoes and the passion fruits and the lychees the sort of fruits that you could kind of touch and you know if you grab a mango and squeeze it the juice is going to come pouring out of it oh, and there is the smallest hint of that super fresh hoppy aroma you know the, the freshest hops you can get and it does leave that again that vegetative smell but the booze and the, the actually no if you were to push me and say one thing they smell like a lot I'd probably say like a dried sweetened mango because oddly enough before this I was eating dried sweetened mango and the smell is pretty much the same as the taste that I had in them now there is booze in this I can feel the nose burning or prickling from the alcohol um, and it, you know it has 11% 11, 11 worth of alcohol in it so it, it is a boozy beast and it smells intense and it smells a lot so cheers let's give it a try Yeah, that's a kick in the teeth, all right. <laughs> Jeez. Heck, it's like drinking hot chips. Extremely, extremely intense. It's less than uh, less than one percent more than the Maharaja, but it just they must have just at every given opportunity gone. Yeah, I just took another handful of hops because there is such a huge amount of bitterness to this. It is palate strippingly bitter. I'd say in the best possible way, if you're going to go for triple IP and it says this is designed to strip your palate, expect it to strip your palate, and it does what it says, it just, my whole mouth is just puckering up, it's unbelievably bitter. But, initially, it, it's unbelievably sweet as well. Again, caramel and toffee, nothing out of the ballpark in terms of malt flavour. I wouldn't expect it from any of them to have more than kind of a sweeter malty caramel toffee flavour anyway. But it's like a sugar syrup sort of flavour. And then just goes whomph and hops strippy tongue. Absolutely dry out your entire mouth. I'm getting dry mouth now. Um, and somewhere in the mix, somewhere in the mix there's like a sweet citrus and mangoey flavour again. But it doesn't doesn't stay long enough. It doesn't stay long enough. It um, it quickly dissipates and just leaves about stringent a, a super super bitterness across my entire mouth. It's certainly nice, and again, it's another kind of showcase beer. But like I was saying with the Maharaja, it just had this je ne sais quoi, this little extra thing. It's just the finesse that just kind of tweaked it to make every flavour just feel like it should have been there. This one feels like perhaps the flavour should have extended for longer. And, and I, you know, it's a triple IPA and, and you want to have as much bitterness in it as possible. If this is anything less than 120 IBUs, as in the lupulin threshold, what, you, what you, you physically can't perceive any more of, I would be extremely surprised. But it just seems to be, despite the sweetness, the, the hot, the bitterness seems to strip the palate a little bit too much. So eke down that bitterness, shove more hops into the post or late boil to get those extra little bit of flavours out uh, might help. <sighs> you know, I don't wanna this is still a good beer, I will say it's still a good beer and I recommend you give it a shot. Um, but um, it's not as finessed as the Maharaja. I'd probably give this an eight out of ten. It is definitely nice. I can recommend you to go and get some. It's it's certainly interesting, it'll make you smile. Um, but it just doesn't have that extra little bit of finesse. So that's our little um, rundown of uh, American hot bombs, to be honest. We've gone from um, Stone Go 2, which is extremely onion and garlic it's, it's that herbal, super fresh. I mean, super fresh. You only get like, like chewing on a hot kernel, really. But it's not for all. Um, Two Hearted, which had a bit more balance of an S to it. It had a nice kind of caramel flavour, but also that floral note as well. And it, 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 su it suited. It was just, just, just almost there, but um, it just wasn't wasn't as great as the Maharaja, you know. Um, then we have the Ballast Point, which I was a little bit disappointed by considering what I've heard. Had that vegetable grassy note as well, but I uh, just lacked, uh, I don't know, it just, it just didn't punch as much as I hoped it would. Maharaja, which is 10.21, um, which I absolutely adored and really loved, um, and it's great, super well balanced. And then 
oh, missed the resin in there as well. Resin, which was good, it was almost completely there in terms of flavour. Are you getting drunk? Oh, yes, I am. Uh, yeah. Almost there in terms of flavour. Um, uh, again, was quite well balanced um, and enjoyed that a lot too. And then Captain Orange. So if you want to showcase beer and you find yourself in New York area, then get that because it will um, strip your palate of all flavour and pressure at all, and um, it's rather nice. Um, so there you go for Bear Beer Reviews. Thanks for watching the kind of side by side of all the American beers. Um, and until next time. Oh, Cheers.